Okay, good afternoon and welcome to the Point of Sale Loyalty Program webinar. My name is Sarah and I'll be hosting this webinar today. I have a couple of things to go through before we get started. Uh, the first one is you've probably noticed your phones are muted. So if you do have any questions for me throughout the presentation, please go ahead and use the chat box um, or the Q&A box. All the questions will be answered when appropriate. So if I feel that is something we are discussing at the time, I will try to answer it. If not, I will answer them at the end of the session. So do not feel like your question is being ignored. They will all get answered by the time we leave here today. You will be able to download a copy of this session in PDF, so a copy of the slides in PDF, as well as a video presentation. Uh, we are recording this presentation, so you'll be able to download this exact one and watch it whenever you feel the need. Uh, so what to expect from these webinars? They're just to enhance your knowledge of Jonas. So we do expect that you have a base level of the Jonas point of sale before taking these, web these webinars. They're not to be taken in place of formal training. It's approximately 50 minutes of information with 10 minutes for questions and answers, and that is kind of just a generic time frame. Uh, this one I find does run a little bit shorter because uh, it is such a small portion of a large module. The loyalty program. Let's run through some of your setups first, and then we'll get into actually using it at the point of sale and the reporting options that are available to you. So the first thing you need when you're creating a loyalty program is to go to point of sale system, loyalty program, files, and then set up edit loyalty program. You'll need to give your loyalty program a code and a description, and then set some of your general parameters. So this, is, this includes whether or not members are earning points or whether they're earning dollars for what they spend, if you can pay your taxes with your loyalty points or dollars, what settlement methods can be used for loyalty, and what general ledger accounts to be used. So we'll go through some of that in more detail. This is what the Setup Edit Loyalty Program screen looks like. You have your loyalty program code up at the top and then your description. You choose whether or not to earn points or dollars. And once you save this, it actually will not allow you to change that. So if you're earning points, you're stuck earning points unless you make a brand new loyalty program. If you're earning dollars, same thing, you are stuck. Uh, the description can be very detailed or you can kind of just leave it as, as brief as possible. Um, and then you can give your loyalty program an expiry date. So if you have a loyalty program where maybe every year balances reset to zero and your members have to start uh, earning again, this would be the date where that happens. You can also set some defaults, like if there's an opening balance, so upon entry, do members automatically get a certain amount of dollars or points. You can set a maximum or a minimum, so maximum dollars or points means how much can they earn before they stop being eligible so your members can't rack up hundreds and hundreds of dollars of loyalty points. You can also set up a minimum, so the member has to spend maybe $100 to get enrolled in the program. Then there are some general options here, like can you pay your taxes? So when I'm redeeming my loyalty points for products either at the golf shop or in the food and beverage department, can I pay my sales tax with my points or do I need to pay that separately? You can also uh, choose to not award points or dollars when I'm redeeming. So even if I'm buying a product that's eligible to be an earning item for points, I'm paying for it in points so I shouldn't really be earning points on top of that. Award dollars only on whole dollar spent. So what that means is if I come into the club and buy something for, for example, $9.50, do I earn on the $9 or do I earn on the 50 cents as well? And you have two options for that. Uh, you can also set a required minimum in, to be eligible to even redeem. So I can't come in and buy a $1 item and redeem my loyalty points. I have to spend at least, for example, $20. And then you have uh, some other options down near the bottom, uh, awarding the net of your discount. If you split payment types, how do you want the points to be split? Um, award points on non-accumulated option prices, so if I upgrade my side or my meal, do I get points on the cost of the upgrade as well? Uh, am I allowing loyalty on markdown items? And is there any kind of earnings or purchase threshold before I can actually start earning points? Like you have to, you have to spend $500 before you can even start earning points back. Then you have two options up at the top here. You have GL and settlement. So GL is setting the actual account for tra your accounting side of the loyalty program. So what you need is an expense account and an accrual account. The expense account uh, typically is one that's going to offset your revenue because these are going to be sales, but then 
since they're being paid by loyalty, it really isn't revenue for the club. It kind of nets itself out. And then you'll also have an accrual account. So this is where the outstanding points will sit until they are spent. The next option was settlement. And this is where you'll define the actual settlement types that a member can earn points or dollars on. So do you want them to be able to earn points no matter what they spend in a club, or is it just on things that they charge to their account, just on things that they pay cash for? Um, you can set those limits here. The next thing you need to have set up once you have your loyalty program general parameters set is your calendar and your schedule. So in order for you to be able to earn and redeem points, there has to be a calendar for your earnings and a calendar for your redemption. And it can be the same one, or you can have certain days or times of the week or month that you can earn and certain days or times of the week and month that you can redeem. So you have your club, your loyalty program, and then you do have to give your calendar a code. In my case, I've chosen to just have for the year 2017, they can earn any day, doesn't matter, and they can redeem any day, doesn't matter. What you can do is filter it so maybe they can only earn on the weekends and only redeem on the weekdays or vice versa. Same with maybe they can only earn every other week or every third week of the month or maybe once a year they can earn. So once you have your calendar set up, you'll want to go in and actually start to attach PUS sales items or categories to your loyalty pro program so you can determine how much members earn when they purchase these things. So you'll define the sales items or categories that are eligible and you have to choose between doing it by item or doing it by category. Then you'll define the dollars or points earned per dollar of purchase. So what that means is when they buy something for a dollar, how much of that dollar do they earn in loyalty points? Same thing for redemption. So when they are choosing to redeem their points or dollars, how much per dollar do they need to be able to redeem? So typically their redemption is one to one. If you have one dollar in loyalty dollars, you can spend it on one real dollar, one item. Uh, but the earnings is less than one to one. Typically it's five or 10 cents. Then you'll assign your calendar and the earnings and redemption calendar can be different or the same. And it can be different per item or category as well. So maybe in the winter, uh, you have a certain category of items that you can earn on, and in the summer it's completely different. You can set that up so that each category has its own calendar of earnings. You can also disable earnings or redemptions on certain items or categories. So maybe you can only earn points on one category of items. You can't ever buy them with points or vice versa. Um, and you can also import all of these things from Excel if you prefer to do things in Excel. So this is what the assigned screen looks like. So again, it's loyalty, uh, point of sale system, loyalty, files, and then attach items or sales categories. I've chosen to do mine by sales category, and you can see I have my categories listed here. I have how much I'm earning per dollar, so five cents on the dollar for everything my members spend on these categories. How much it's going to cost my members to redeem, so it's one loyalty dollar per dollar of the cost. My calendar, and I've chosen to make it out every day, no matter what. And then I haven't disabled anything or on this side, but I could disable earnings or redemption on certain categories of items. You can also have loyalty points awarded for fee billing schedules. So this is very common with your prepaid food and beverage minimum, but you can also do it for you know, your dues or uh, if you have to charge any additional fees, you can earn loyalty based on the fee billing schedule. So if you go to club management, club setup, fee billing schedule and then click on the loyalty button, you tell the system exactly which loyalty program they're earning in, how many dollars or points that they're earning, and it depends on what your general parameter is set to, on what field you'll fill out. So for every time this fee billing schedule is built, my members will earn $60. And then you just have to give it a partition, a sales area, and then create a dummy sales item so that uh, Jonas knows what to report on when it's giving you your outstanding balances report. Once you have your schedule set up and your items and categories attached, you'll want to start enrolling your members in the program. 
So you have a couple of different ways you can do this. You can do it back office if it's something that your members automatically get enrolled in, and you can enroll them individually. You can enroll them by status, or you can enroll them by activity slash category, which is your fee billing schedule or your dues. You can also enroll them individually at the point of sale when they're making a purchase. So if it's an opt-in program, you'll probably want to do it at point of sale. If it's just something that you're offering to your members, whether they take advantage of it or not, you'll want to do it back office. So in this screenshot, I've shown you how to enroll members by status. So you'll choose your loyalty program and then choose the status off the list that you wish to enroll. So everybody who's an active member at my club is being enrolled with an automatic balance of $10. Just have to hit update and those people are enrolled and can actually start earning and redeeming. You also have the option to pool members into one big loyalty group. So if you have a couple members, and this is super common for corporate accounts uh, that aren't quite dependents of somebody else, but they are uh, one big group or associated with each other, you can pool them together. So now the pool master is this corporate account here, his two employees, now all three of them, when they come in and use the club, their loyalty points or dollars get grouped into one big pot that they can all draw from. So once you've enrolled your members, you're ready to actually start using it at the point of sale. So the first thing to do would be to put these buttons on your menu so your servers have better access to your loyalty. So there are five buttons that you can use with the loyalty program. Uh, the first one is enroll in loyalty. So as a member has a chit, going. Once it's settled, so you'll click on cash, credit, member charge, and it's at a zero balance, you'll click on that button, enroll in loyalty, and they'll be enrolled in that loyalty program. Loyalty inquiry allows your staff or the member to check their balances. So you'll click on that and it will actually give you uh, the transactions on the account and the outstanding balance. Card scan, we aren't going into too much detail about today, but what you can do is have a third party loyalty program and then you could scan their card and it will actually pop up their inquiry. Uh, loyalty slash member charge and redeem loyalty are both just different ways to settle the chit. So loyalty slash member charge will redeem as many points as it can on any eligible items and then the rest will be charged to the member's account. Redeem loyalty will redeem as many loyalty points as it can on eligible items but it will leave a balance remaining. So in more detail, when I'm clicking on loyalty program inquiry, within my account, you can see that I have a, uh, I've earned 60 points on my prepaid minimum, that's my dues, and I have a $60 balance outstanding. So if I wanna use it, I can use that $60 in loyalty points. Loyalty slash member settlement, when I'm pushing that button, what it does is it redeems all eligible loyalty points. So you can see my meal here, is eligible for loyalty and I'm paying my taxes and my service charges on it. And then the shirt that I also purchased is not eligible for loyalty, so that was actually charged to my account. Redeem loyalty will just redeem the loyalty points eligible. So again, it's the same order. On my meal, I got my loyalty points redeemed, but you can see I now have a balance on this shit of $20 that I need to pay off. So let's get into some of the reporting that's available to you. So the first one we have is under point of sale, loyalty, reports, and then it's the member balances report. It gives you all of the members with their numbers in the loyalty program with their balances, including totals for what was earned and what was redeemed. The price list gives you a report of all the items or categories that are eligible for this program and the earnings ratio as well as the redeeming ratio. The loyalty transaction log gives you a report of every transaction that has to do with loyalty that happens, so whether it's an earn, an edit, or redeem. And the loyalty activity report gives you the same information, but it's grouped by member, and it tells you the user ID that actually processed the transaction. You can also do an inquiry on your loyalty program. So this will give you an interactive listing of all the transactions for a certain member. So you can see exactly what happened on their account and you can print this as well. Once your, your period is done and you're ready to expire member loyalty points, you'll go to point of sale, loyalty, processing, and then loyalty program expiry. This will clear out all the member balances. 
it will clear out that liability account and transfer it to the expense account to offset that expense. Um, and you can also unenroll members from this program. So if, uh, if it's one of those things where the members have to opt in, it'll expire, you'll unenroll them, and then you can start fresh with a new season. So that is all the material that I have for you today. I will open it up for questions now, so just give the phones a second to unmute. Okay, so phone should be unmuted now if anyone has any questions for me at this time. Okay, great. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining, and I will stay on the line just in case there are some last-minute questions. Otherwise, I hope you guys have a great rest of your day.